Hello everyone, welcome to another video. In this video, I want to talk about the increase that we're seeing in our prices, also known as inflation. So if you follow the news, you will know that as of June, this article well, this article was written June 10th, and it says U.S. inflation marks another 40-year high as CPI reaches 6 or 8.6% in May. So just a quick definition of inflation. I'm going to go ahead to the Federal Reserve website to get an official definition. And the question is, what is inflation and how does the Federal Reserve evaluate changes in the rate of inflation? It says inflation is the increase in the prices of goods and services over time. Inflation cannot be measured by an increase in the cost of one product or service or even several products or services. Rather, inflation is a general increase in the overall price level of the goods and services in the economy. Okay, so that's the definition of inflation, the increase in the prices of goods and services over time. Now, you will see the word CPI thrown around, and that's the consumer price index. Similar to a stock index fund, for example, it is a conglomeration of a variety of goods and services. You could think of it as a basket. And the CPI, it's developed by looking at information that families provide on some of the things that they're buying. And I will put a link down below to the Bureau of Labor Statistics website, which I'm showing here, if you want to know exactly how it's created. But it, it really is just taking a variety of things and then putting them into a basket and then tracking the increase in price over time of those same goods and services. I mean, that's a simplified way of doing it. And again, if you want to learn more, you can come on down to the BLS website. Okay, so what does that look like in the real world or our day to day? When we say things are more expensive, how do we know and what does that look like? So one way of looking at it is looking at things looking at things, no, sorry, one way of looking at it is looking at things broken down into sectors. And this is where the inflation that we're experiencing now really can have a disproportionate effect on people depending on their lifestyles. And what I mean by that is that the overall inflation rate right now is pegged at 8.6%. And we'll talk about what that looks like on a dollar basis. However, you'll notice food, there was a 10% increase, and this is like a year over year increase. And of course, it's going to depend on what you eat. And it's the same thing with energy, a 34.6% increase in energy. And it's the same thing. It depends on the energy that you're using. So for example, gasoline is up, I think like 50% over year over year. So if you drive, that's going to affect you. However, it may not have been such a large increase if you were, for example, somebody that takes public transportation or if you bike to work or walk to work or walk wherever you need to go and you don't use gasoline, then obviously you will be less or you'll feel a lesser impact because you're not being exposed to that increase in the energy costs. Okay, but obviously food, everybody has to eat. So, you know, you're kind of stuck there. And then I'll also include a link here. This is a US inflation calculator and they have additional detail here. So you can look for trends in terms of some of the different items. So if you wanted to get specific, um, you will be able to see kind of that inflation or the rate of change for specific items over time. Okay. All right, back to our calculator. So what does that mean for us? Well, here's a quick comparison. And this number here is not accurate. When we think about inflation, that's the year or year in year over year increase in costs on an average basis, again, depending on what you purchase. So I'm just going to come here and say, let's say in the year 2018, you purchased an item that was a dollar and in 2019 so a year later that same item would cost one dollar two cents so we're sitting during those that that year it was about a two percent inflation rate another way of looking at it though if you look at it in the inverse would be that in two in 2019 compared to 2018 your money was now worth, every dollar that you had in 2018 was now worth 98 cents in 2019. 
And that goes along the line when somebody says, oh, I remember back in my day when I could buy gum for five cents and now the gum is 25 cents, right? We've seen that increase in the cost of that good or that, um, you know, that piece of gum over time. So the negative impact when you see that inflation number, as you figure it out, is that it represents really an erosion of the money that you have. In other words, if you had a dollar sitting in your bank in 2018, in 2019, the buying power of that dollar is now worth 98 cents because the cost of the goods have increased 2%. All right, makes sense. So let's go ahead and jump now and compare 2021 2022. All right. So if you purchase something in 2021 for a dollar, then in 2022, that same item would cost one dollar and eight cents. And this is with the approximate inflation rate of about eight percent, which is similar to what we're seeing here. And again, these are averages and approximations, but you get the idea. Now, putting it in the inverse is where it gets interesting. We, if we had a dollar in 2021, well, in 2022, that dollar is now worth 93 cents. And why that matters is because if you have, if you're saving and you have, if you have your money in a, a bank savings account and it's earning obviously 0% interest because the banks aren't um, providing any yield on their investment, then that $1 is now worth 93 cents. That $100 that you have saved is worth $93. That $1,000 that you have saved is now worth $930. And that's where inflation really is a savings killer, especially when it's so high because it's eroding away your money. And, and, and we're kind of talking about two different things, but kind of one of the same. If you have money saved, your money is being eroded because when we put this, let's go here and say, let's compare that to 2018. All right, and here's where you can see a real big effect, right? So if, so if you had the money in the bank for four years, not earning any yield, then you can see that your money would be worth only 86 cents over that period of time. So that dollars turned 86 cents. All right. So that was a quick overview of inflation. And some of the takeaways really from it is that your money, if you have an excess of money, then it is going to be losing value because the cost of goods and services increase over time. And that's where it might be wise to look into some way to churn your money, if you will, to move it from a savings vehicle. And of course, this is not financial advice and every situation is going to be different. But it's 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 just if you have a long time horizon, that's the reason why people don't or wouldn't put money, say, in a bank savings account beyond an emergency fund, and they would put it into a vehicle like maybe the stock market or to collect the bulls or Bitcoin or something, because they're trying to at least keep up with this high rate of inflation. In other words, so that way their money, if it's a dollar now, it'll at least be worth a dollar in the future if they can yield, if they can match the inflation rate. So if inflation's eating away your money at 8.6% and you're able to earn 8.6%, in yield or interest, then obviously you, your money is going to still maintain that value instead of being eroded. Now, the other takeaway would be if you do not have excess of you know, money, you don't have savings and you're more living on a you know here and now basis because obviously the cost of goods is increasing the way they have, you know, it's made things a lot tighter, it's a lot less saving that can be done, right? Because wages have not increased as much. So what that means is that in order to keep up and stay above water, then it's really going to be imperative that you find ways to save money by reducing the cost of the goods and services that you purchase. And that might be switching your shopping habits. It might be saving. It might be changing your um, you know, shopping and maybe even your discretionary spending. So whereas in the, before, you know, you might have gone to the movie theaters. Now that same money has to go towards gasoline because your wages have not increased enough to keep up with the cost increase in gas or food. All right, so that's just a quick summary of what inflation is. If you already know it, I appreciate you watching. If this was new, then go ahead and add maybe your feedback or comments in the comment section. And please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Try to put out some information really directed towards teachers on ways that they can save money and hopefully stay above water, especially in this 
weird economy that we're in. And um, according to reports, I mean, we force they foresee this inflation to be a problem for the next few months or years to come. So as always, I really appreciate your time. And this is Dr. Diffin signing off. Bye bye. Mm-hmm.